Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. And today's video is just a little bit of a time lapse and I'm showing the process I use to add color inside of Manga Studio. So uh, what I do is just create a selection layer, I uh, fill in the character, I did a bit of a gradient backdrop, and then I go right to uh, painting the character with the, the layer locked, so the transparency uh, locked of that layer. And I can just start brushing in like highlights and tones and you know all that fun stuff. So uh, one of the brushes I use is the soft air brush set to highlight, as you can see on the left, top left there. And what it does is you can select any color, um, but really you can select the same color you're working with, and it will give you a highlight version of that color. So it's uh, it's a really quick way to punch in some highlights and add some light sources um, really effectively especially on specular objects, which is uh, obviously uh, works well with this character. So yeah, and then just filling in a lot of the tone uh, as I go. I'm actually working all on one layer, uh, which is okay to do, but keep in mind if you want more ability to edit your work, each time you add another color, which, uh, you know, as you see, I'm just dropping in like flat colors to start with. Uh, you can do each one of those as a separate layer, and then you can lock transparency of each one of those layers, and it really affords you some uh, ability to edit your work. So just keep that in mind. You know, I'm, I think that the more you progress in doing colors and things like that, you start to kind of do away with that and use less layers. Uh, but there are times that you kind of wish that you would have went back and had layers because you can, you don't have to worry about bleeding over into the other color as you're painting. So. Uh, and that's just one of the many things. You can actually do a lot of things with blending modes as well uh, by keeping things separated and adjusting uh, colors and their color balance and, and all that fun stuff. So yeah, just uh, using the the uh, s smooth watercolor brush to kind of first paint in textures on the tentacle, the alien on his back there, and then going back with the, the highlights of the airbrush. So I really enjoy using the sm uh, smooth watercolor brush. You probably, if you've watched the channel, you've probably seen a few of the videos that I've demonstrated it. And uh, yeah, it's quickly becoming or has become one of my favorite ways to paint. Uh, the ability to just throw in texture and, and blend at the same time. Uh, so paint and blend at the same time is just really neat. I, I think it feels really natural. So. I'd recommend trying that out and then you know obviously you can look at the other videos I got to explain the process a little bit further. Um, and FYI I'm also doing a video series on my Gumroad. I started a Gumroad page and the Blackstone comics available for uh, digital download there so you can check that out. And I'm also going to be uploading more like in-depth courses you know they'll be like long-winded courses that explain stuff like this in full detail. Um, so let me know what you'd like to see on there. I'll also start probably including brushes. It's all going to be digital content just to help me, you know, further progress the uh, the art venture and, and keep doing what I'm doing here. So let me know if you, you know, think you should, would like to see something specific on there. I am all ears. And, uh, yeah, just keep repeating this process where I just kind of fill in the flats, add a little bit of light source or... Go to the uh, smooth watercolor with a darker tone, uh, in this case more of a brownish gold, and then just try to figure out what you know what color I think the uh, the gold tones would look like. So I'll add the dark tones, and I'll come back with the highlight uh, with the airbrush and punch up the light source. And you know it's a very basic approach to coloring. Um, I've never been much of an, an advanced colorist. Uh, you know you see some of the stuff they do in some of the comics and it's just amazing you know they got all these different little nuances and effects that they put in their stuff um, I have a very basic approach uh, it tends to look a little bit saturated as well but I don't know I just I kind of like the fun feel of it or you know even though this one's more of a dark kind of you know ominous uh, hunched over look or whatever uh, I like having the saturated colors and the, the brighter feel um, I guess that's just me and the style that I'm more um, accustomed to. Uh, so, but it, it lends to me being a little bit quicker with my colors. Uh, now, if if all I had to do was sit around and color stuff, then maybe I would, you know, get really in depth with it and do some 
uh, more dramatic effects, but no, basically I got to do pencil, inks, colors. So yeah, I go with, I go with a little bit of an, uh, a speedy effect. But I'll tell you, Mega Studio is great for that because it just uh, it breaks down the process really well. You know, if you separate everything by layers, if you notice uh, by this part of the, the coloring, I actually added a layer for the gun because uh, I started wishing that I kind of would have separated everything by layer. Um, and then, you know, once you do that, you not only have the ability to paint within that the confinements of that layer by lock and transparency, you also can right click on the layer and tell it to create a selection from that from that layer. So then when you fill that layer with say another color like you'll see me do here with the gun here shortly because I kind of wanted it to have a little bit of a blue overcast or highlight or whatever. Uh, so you can select from that layer, you can paint in other tones and then you can use the blending modes from the layers to control all kinds of effects. So by doing that you just have a number of type of things that you can do to change your work as you go. So, you know, I don't know if you're like me and you some things you run into problems with and you need to kind of play around with it till you see the right thing. That's where that's going to come into play because the layers, the blending modes, honestly, I can't even tell you what all the blending modes do. I just know there's a lot of options there. And as you manipulate them, you can even use blending mode over blending mode. So say you have like I don't know, you want to change the overall color of the gun here to more of a blue, but then you want a nice bright light source on the one edge. Uh, obviously, you can paint that all into one layer, but if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can use the blending modes and keep applying the effects till you get the desired result. So it's uh, it's really great for experimentation, and uh, you know, which is so important in art because that's how you find the next best effect in your work, you know, to go... Oh man, I remember when I used to paint something this way and it, now I look back, it looks horrible. I wish I would have done this, this, and this. Or, or, you know, once you figure it out, you're like, oh, I'll never go back. I'll always, you know, shade this way or paint this way. So experimentation is what allows that to uh, kind of occur in your work. And it's funny, I'm starting to realize that this program really does have almost everything in it. I mean, there's only a few things that I've noticed um, that I really have to still rely on uh, even Photoshop for, uh, which Photoshop is like the big dog in my opinion, and I, I always use it. Um, it's you know an industry standard, but um, if this had more image editing capability, as far as like the ability to add more um, effects within like dissolve and filters and uh, image enhancements, color enhancements, then it would it would pretty much just overtake it because this portion you see me doing here and definitely the drawing and the inking and definitely the perspective drawing I prefer to all do inside this program now so it's just amazing that you know for the difference of what types of programs these are that this still has this kind of ability um, especially for young artists that want to get involved in this stuff because the price points are so much more affordable um, so yeah and, and, and in no way am I paid to say that I'm just, just literally shooting off the hip and saying it because it really is the truth that it's it's a really good program you know it's it amazes me what some of these art programs do for what they uh what they cost you know but yeah so um just playing around with the effects here some more you see i changed the uh color of the smoke there and i'm trying to add more of a highlight source um yeah and just bouncing back and forth you know and See, uh, the other thing when you're doing layers, you know, you just kind of add to one, then move to the other, add to the other, because you got to get the edges to kind of line up when you're doing separate layers, but it's it's not that hard to do. It still works out a lot better. And then I'll, uh, I'll paint in the hand, glove area, and then just add some tone to this. And if you notice, I really just repeat the whole process each time for, again, my basic coloring style. I'll do the flat layer, lock transparency, then I'll grab like the soft airbrush or the smooth watercolor uh, paintbrush and brush in some tones. So uh, here I start with the highlights to, to show the, the raised area. Then I take the airbrush set to shadow and I brush in some of the shadow tones. Um, so it's a very basic approach, but it works really well. It's easy and quick and, you know, works for what I'm trying to do. So that's what I go with. 
So yeah, that's about it as far as the base color. I then end up taking it into Photoshop, doing a little bit more post-processing as far as some little glares and affect some of the levels and, and tones that I wanted to see a little bit differently. I actually shaded the bottom up to kind of draw more focus to the top of his head and the, the light source. So, so yeah, at any rate, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Be sure to let me know what you thought, what you like, and uh, what you don't, and what you'd like to see in the future on this channel. Uh, also, there's going to be a link in the description below to my Gumroad page where you'll be able to find not only the Blackstone comic, but more of my digital content. Also, let me know what you think of that and what you'd like to see on there as well. So as always, thanks for watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.